big day for the seedlings and you're here it's so good to have you here thank you so much i appreciate your time as i said big day for the seedlings they're coming outside today now in the blooming alley i've got plenty of space you think yeah well I would like to, this year, use a shelf that I haven't been able to use for orchids, <laughs> per se, because I've had a massive humidity tray on that shelf, seeing as I have such low humidity. So that's going to go down onto the terracotta floor, even though I don't like it, but I would like to take advantage of that lower shelf for more orchids that should be outside, hopefully to gain some strength. But you know what? We've got 14 seedlings to have a look at. I think I'm just gonna go through maybe 10. I don't wanna take up too much of your time, but I thought, listen, these little guys, huh, they've been cooped up. It's their big day. So let's stop the jibber jabber, get them out, have a look at them. Some need their leaves wiped, some need to be flushed, some need a little bit of a preventative treatment against pests. And while I do all that and talk to you about them as quickly as possible so I don't keep you here for too long, I have my gorgeous Dendrobium nobly here because of this Freesia fragrance. So whistle while you work and sniff, sniff, sniff. Delicious. Anyway, right out of the gate, I'm probably not going to have this seedling outside because this is the Cattleya Maxima I got from Matt by Nature. It was the Order of Afri Orchids. He sent this to me in 2022 and it has been sort of in please grow me some roots into the pot mode. So we have had a new growth develop. There's another new growth tucked away in down there. It is an extremely reluctant root grower. I was concerned about the state of the roots, thinking maybe this orchid has an underlying issue because... Here we have a root that was gorgeous, grew into the pot like I wanted it to, and it started failing. But we have some active roots, viable roots, already going down into the media in my suspended potting up method. So yeah, and of course we have the ones that think, yeah, not doing it, not having it, and they're going aerial. Now she is doing a lot better than she was during the winter and I would say that probably is because the temperatures are now much more agreeable. So she is going to stay inside. It is far too dry out here for her. Indoors she's still going to get plenty of light but she'll be a bit more protected from the dry air. The whole point of this suspended potting up method is to have so much humidity around the base of the orchid while there is still airflow so that I don't lose any roots that grow. Instead, they go down into the pot. Then filling up to the base with some media, but you can see after all this time, we're not there yet. I'm still observing her, but you know what? I'm feeling so much better now than I did yeah, six months ago. <laughs> Two seedlings I have not seen bloom yet. They came in a single pot on the first repot. I separated the two and put them into very tall cups, as you can see, semi-hydro setup. The reason I put them in such tall cups was because the roots were so long. I did not want to try and squeeze them into a smaller pot, risking cracking them. That's why they are in cups that look like a grande, if you were to go to Starbucks. Anyway, they need a flush today, but they're doing so much better. Maybe this is the year we're going to see growth. I have one new growth coming out of this piece and following right behind it, there's another new growth on the other piece right here. True to form, one new growth per year. So it would be nice to see if one of these pieces actually blooms for us this year. Just a flush. She was fertilized the last time I did this. So I'm just going to keep this media nice and wet. Keep the humidity around the base for when she starts to produce some roots. I'm very tempted to not have her in these cups anymore, but for now, we're not gonna disturb her. There's no plan in any way, shape or form of repotting this year in 2023. I already wiped the leaves a couple of days ago, so these are good to go. My Cattleya Gyrac Cosmos. Ooh, I was so scared for her during the winter. She lost two leaves of the new growth that she developed while she was in my care. I received her last year in 2022 as well. Thank you, Anonymous. She grew four new growths during that season that she was with me. And two of those new growths 
lost leaves because of the cold during the winter. And this was not recent. It started to happen around January. I was freaking out. I just thought, no, it can't be true. C'est pas possible, please don't do this to me. You can see one leaf. Yeah, even though it's the older part of the leaf there, I don't, I don't want to lose any more leaves because she is a vigorous little orchid. She has rooted in beautifully. Did a video on this one with two cameras, Fiddle Fans Unite, as I took her off a mount and potted her up into this. If you want to watch that, I'll link it in the description. <laughs> Not only was getting her off the mount a fiddle, the editing was interesting too. But she got a little bit of fertilizer a couple of days ago. She's still okay. She doesn't need a flush. There are no new growths to be seen so far, but you can see here, there's one that lost a leaf, and thankfully this one held on. This would be her most recent one, and the same happened in the back here. Lost a leaf there, and thankfully the more recent one still has the leaf. Oh, please, stay with me. She is gorgeous. Chansu, golden orange, golden boy, from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. Thank you very much. I got her in 2021. Now she has recently been flushed and I also took some salty accumulations off the media of the surface. I don't need to flush her again. Her roots are still damp. Are they? Oh, barely. Let's flush her. Flushing never hurts. She's got fertilizer in her reservoir because Madam is doing great. I got a new growth to grow throughout the winter. Right, this is my sorry little Chantilly Lace Twinkle. She's an OG in my collection. She came to my collection in December of 2018. She has been a struggling orchid since I got her. The fact that she's still in my collection, well, I don't know if it's me or the orchid, a little bit of both of us working in tandem. This orchid has all the hallmarks of having something sus in it. And I use the word F-bomb for that. But we're gonna keep fighting because clearly she's trying. So, hey, you know, I'm losing other orchids. There's space, takuna matata. So you see, she did grow this growth last year. Then she grew a double root system for me, which was amazing, but you see how stained it is. Now, this one's nice and this one's not. Now I'm gonna have to disinfect my hands before I touch any other orchids because yeah, I've got my suspicions with this one. But anyway, there's staining all over this one. Root tips die. I can say, well, she's touching leka, dry, lack of humidity, could be a factor there as well. But her habit has always been really, really weird. So we're gonna wait and see if she pushes out another new growth this year. I have no intentions of repotting her. I've recently cleaned her leaves. Now I'm going to disinfect my hands because huh, not touching another orchid before my hands are super sterile. Again. My Dawiana variety Aurea definitely still a long way to go before we see any blooms on this orchid. The original Dawiana that I have is double the size of this one when it comes to structures. But you know, you got to start somewhere if you want an orchid and you can't get it blooming size. She came to me with heavy, heavy nitrogen deficiency, which you can still see the remnants of in the back leaves here with the black markings. The nursery cut off the leaf in the back. You can see it must have been really, really bad. They chopped that off, still see remnants, but never mind. Since she's been with us, she is doing so much better. No nitrogen deficiency is taking the winters very, very well. And we have a new growth coming right there. So not much to see here with the exception of yippee yay -yay. New growth, happy days. Not going to fuss around with any flushing. That was done a couple of days ago, ready to take her outside. Here is Catlia Maxima Alba, courtesy of the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. So I got her back in 2020, November, and well, look at this. She's doing great. She's still with me. She's growing a new root, single, but look at the growth that developed over the winter. It's right here, kind of curved its way back because that's how the light source was doing fine, doing absolutely fine. Not expecting it to be any bigger 
than what we've had before because, you know, winter growths, they don't amount to much in my climate. Still, she was flushed a couple of days ago. Don't need to repeat that this time around. You can see how the media is nice and wet. Let's check the water levels. We can add a little tiny drop of fertilizer in there to encourage the root growth. Hang on a second, we won't go over the top. We'll go straight into the reservoir. So that'll be about 150, approximately 200 parts per million for her so that she can develop nice, nice roots. Do you sometimes find that you've lost an orchid as in where is my orchid? Not lost as in it died and you don't remember. That is what is happening to me right now. I know I had a group of four of these seedlings. These are my OGs. I only see three. Meanwhile, we only see one here, but I don't know where my fourth one is. Anyway, let's deal with the ones we've got, but that is so bizarro. Anywho, you see this leaf? Multo concerning, don't know why. Don't know why this happened. Couldn't see any scale on this orchid throughout the winter. And that didn't happen throughout the winter. That is just recent. So whatever is going on, we'll do a preventative little treatment. Protect my little Dendrobium nobili blooms in the back there from this garlic alcohol. But you see now with this one, all I'm doing is waiting for another new growth or two. I believe there's two of them in there. They're intertwined. Here's one lead. Here's another lead. So that's what we're looking for. By the way, this is Catlia meliana andreasen. So that is Eximia crossed with Blue Princess. I got them, there you go, from that webpage. That was my start of the seedling collection. Unfortunately, my deflasking was not successful, but I know I had four little ones. I can only see three, but she's one of the most advanced, so happy to see her doing okay. Could be better, you know? Don't like seeing anything like this going on, but we like that. That's good. Could be better. But I think we've got plenty of time this summer to get her to bulk up a little bit more even. In the same grouping is this one, also from Cattleya Blue, DE. That's Cattleya Moonbells. Okay, so... Huh. I know I repotted them last year because I wanted them in this setup with these pots, they were already in self-watering, but they were in pots that I wasn't too, yeah, it wasn't as snug a fit as this inner pot and mask set is right here. Yeah, this one I'm a little bit concerned about because I only have one lead. Don't like the look of the roots at all, but we're gonna leave her in the pot, not stress her out, and then hopefully we'll get another growth coming that'll provide us with some roots. Oh, they are viable in there, but, mm, could be better, could be better. You see that? That is unfortunate when it just dies right there and then. So anyway, could do better, could look better, but she, at least she's here for us to look at. So she'll go back on the shelf in the blooming alley, middle shelf where I have everybody under close scrutiny. Are you still with me? Do you want me to continue? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna continue. I hope that this is not too boring for you. You see, here's three out of three, actually three out of four. Looking for these labels. Don't know where my fourth one is. Oh, and this one is super slow and super, super dry. So we're gonna have to flush her through desperately. This is a Leopoldi eye cross and oh my goodness, what a slow poke. So we've only had, since she's been with me, two growths. Again, 2018 also got her in 2018. Seedling growths have died back only managed two growths. She took like a year just to sit and sulk. So <laughs> she doesn't look that much different from when she first arrived in my collection. So we're, you know, we're doing okay. She's not going downhill per se, but yeah. That's why she's still in this little pot and didn't get upgraded like her compadres. So we're gonna put a tad of fertilizer in there. Having already added our O water and just a little bit of a drink there, that would be about 60 parts per million. Needless to say, no prizes for guessing what we need out of this one. A new growth. <laughs> so we'll put her also in the back by the blooming alley where we can keep an eye on her. Just make sure that she doesn't get in any way, shape or form taken out by any kind of pests. I mean, she's a strong little one, but after almost five years, oh, I know, 
Please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so, so much if you're doing that. If you're new to my channel, I appreciate the support. These little seedlings, we can watch their progress throughout the season of 2023 together. I really would love to be able to get out to a bigger audience. It's not easy being in Europe with a brand new channel. So if you would like to help the channel out, please subscribe and like the video. And then of course, oh, the coup de grace would be to share it to everybody that you know who doesn't know my channel. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Now, thank you to the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. Also for this Cattleya Maxima Cerula. Also came in November of 2020. Doing fabulously. Still small though. But look, look at that. Pop of green. Gotta love pops of green like that. So she's already well underway with her new growth. Love it. That's all I need to do with this one. She had a flush a couple of days ago. In the next reservoir fill up, I'm putting fertilizer in as well. Also about 60, maybe 100 parts per million, depending on the weather. If I have too low humidity, it'll be 60. But then I can always, you know, refresh, refresh and add more. If it's going to be nice and humid on the day that I do it, it'll be 100 parts per million. Lovely jubbly. And if you've been with my channel since this beautiful package arrived in 2020 from Michael McCarthy, Melissa Walker and the Orchid Room, you may remember that when I potted up the Maxima Alba that they sent me in that package, a little teeny tiny remnant baby seedling popped off, which was not ideal for the pot that the other one was going into that was more advanced. So we put this one into seedling cup kind of setup with Akadama and grit. And it has lost a couple of leaves, clearly, but it's still got a couple of leaves. And we're on the move with our next growth and a root. So she's still around. She wasn't looking too good for a moment there. Moving into winter and I was thinking, yeah, this is it. This is gonna be a going, going, gone. But nope, still with us. Back on the shelf with her compadre, she goes. I have one little seedling here that I'm gonna leave a mystery because I have as yet to compile a care collab for it and I would only be repeating myself. So when that care collab airs, it'll be in the description. It's holding on. That's all I'm gonna say about this seedling. It's holding on. Blooming Alley middle shelf is pretty much complete. I still gotta shuffle around. The orchid shuffle never really ends, but the other ones I have pretty much scattered around the patio based on where they did well last year. So I've got some on the east side. I've got some on the Blooming Alley that are a little bit lower. They'll probably get moved again once I can see where my misting goes, because I have to be very careful with misting on these little ones. Don't wanna lose any new growths that we've just seen. But the majority I have kind of scattered in like second row here, just so that I can keep an eye on them, make sure that any new roots don't frazzle out on me, keep them misted, etc. Before I leave you though, I want to show you something. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze, <laughs> but it's worth it. Because if you've been with me from Jump, you will also know that Cattleya leopoldii is also an orchid that I've been wanting to grow in my collection for well, since the beginning, since you joined me on YouTube when I started my channel. And this is my 2.0 because the first one had something that I believe my Chantilly Lace has, and that's the F-bomb. But look at this. You remember another video I did wondering what is going on with my growth? Sorry about the camera. Can I get it to focus? Please don't do this to me. When in doubt, start again. Anyway, I did that video. I had all these funny li little things happening when the growths were new, tender. March, maybe, sometime around then. Here's my Leopoldii. The growth has matured beautifully. And we do have a first time ever little sheath in a growth. Now, I am not saying she's going to bloom. She's a young one. She needs to mature. But this, drum roll, excite. This is a first. Super thrilled about it. Very happy, especially when this started happening and I was like, what is going on? The other growths where we saw this phenomenon, they are fine. So with that, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope all of that was in focus. There's only one way to find out. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Eventually, probably I'll see it on the footage anyway. But more importantly, I appreciate the fact that you've been here and had a look at my seedlings. They're all outside now with the exception of the first one. 
Let the growing begin. Let's see maybe one new growth come out of the entire selection we saw today that has a size jump that signals it's not a seedling anymore, but in my collection, it turns into a juvenile, which to others is near blooming size. Anyway, appreciate your time. Hope you are having a fantastic day. May it continue on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.